Happy Christmas Eve Eve, sisters and brothers of Trinity. Welcome to my final midweek check-in before Christmas. For those that aren't aware, I used some vacation time last week, so that's why you didn't get a midweek check-in from me. And honestly, this week, most of you are probably going to worship tomorrow, so I guess this installment is well more than halfway through the church week, really, but that's okay. Sometimes life throws us scheduling curveballs, and you just kind of roll with it. I'm not preaching this weekend. If I were preaching this weekend, you've all learned by now that I'm a bit of a windbag, and I would probably say way more words than are necessary to make my point. Why say in 500 words what you can say in 2,000 words? I used to try to ask Pastor Benson for length guidelines for my messages, and his reply would be, as long as you need to make your point, and no more time than you need to make your point. That's taken some getting used to for me. I tend to worry too much about just exactly how long I'm going to talk, or I won't know when to shut up. So this is my last opportunity to speak to you all before Christmas. And every year as we get caught up in the hustle and bustle making preparations, we tend to find ourselves sympathizing with Charlie Brown when he needs a reminder. Can't anyone just tell me what Christmas is really all about? In the midst of shopping and wrapping and cleaning and decorating and baking and sending out Christmas cards, it's all too easy to forget why we're doing it. Christmas is about hope. It is about light. It is about joy. It's about love, and it's about peace. As many of you know, Christmas actually started its life as a pagan holiday long before Jesus came along. Ancient pre-Christian religions celebrated the birth of their gods right around the time of the winter solstice, and they even decorated evergreen trees and exchanged gifts to celebrate. When Christianity came along, the church appropriated the holiday for our own purposes. Jesus probably wasn't actually born at this time of year, but that's okay. Why did those ancient pre-Christian religions choose to celebrate the birth of their gods now of all times? Well, because at this time of year, when the days are short and the nights are long and cold, the human heart needs a little something. The human spirit needs a reason to celebrate. The human soul needs a little pick-me-up during this season in which it's all too easy to succumb to seasonal depression and lose hope, the hope that light and warmth and joy will come again. So, those ancient pre-Christians said to themselves, let's celebrate. Let's decide that we're not going to allow the cold and dark of this time of year to get us down. Even if we have to manufacture a reason to celebrate, fine. We'll create the mythology that says that our gods were born at this time of year as long as it gives us a reason to party, as long as it gives us something to look forward to, as long as it gives us something to hope for. And sure enough, when you add our God into the mix, God can take anything, no matter how secular or pagan its origins may be, and sanctify it. Eventually, the true God of the universe really did take human form. Probably not on December 25th, but who cares? Families who adopt children and don't know their true birthdays will often just pick a day and roll with it because it's far more important to celebrate and be glad than it is to argue about the actual date. <clears throat> Roughly 2,000 years ago, God gave the human family the greatest gift that we could possibly imagine. God gave us the gift of a Savior, a Son, who would set us free from sin and death and empower us to live in God's kingdom forever and ever. Because he lives, we will live. The circumstances of his birth weren't perfect. The Savior was born into a smelly stable, living in a state under oppression, with danger lurking around every corner. And sure enough, not long after his birth, Herod came looking for him to kill him. But that tiny infant in the manger reminds us that there is no night so long, no cold so bitter, and no dark so deep that the love of God can be snuffed out. There is no force in all creation that can extinguish that light. 
God's love literally cannot be stopped. Sometimes we might forget about it for a little while. Sometimes we might have trouble finding that love in our longest nights. But there is nothing that can take it away from us for good. So there you have it, Charlie Brown. That's what Christmas means, to me anyway. Just as a reminder, we have services this weekend coming up at 6 and 8 on Christmas Eve and 10 o'clock on both Christmas Day and on the 26th. I look forward to seeing you all there. Have a very Merry Christmas, Trinity. God's peace.